Britney Spears says her father belittled and degraded her while in her 13-year conservatorship, which ended in 2021 but had left her feeling robot-like. In a new cover story for People, Britney Spears briefly speaks to the magazine about her reason for doing her memoir The Woman in Me, which arrives October 24th. The rare interview runs alongside an extensive excerpt that traces her childhood days in the Mickey Mouse Club to making her first album to her infamous head-shaving incident and eventual 13-year conservatorship. Much of the excerpt focuses on control, how much she once had over herself, and the result of having that taken away, and the way she was objectified by the industry and her father. I'd been eyeballed so much growing up. I'd been looked up and down, had people telling me what they thought of my body since I was a teenager. Shaving my head and acting out were my ways of pushing back, she said. But under the conservatorship, I was made to understand that those days were now over. I had to grow my hair out and get back into shape. I had to go to bed early and take whatever medication they told me to take. Spears details how her father and the former conservator of her estate and person, Jamie, belittled and controlled her for more than a decade, repeatedly telling her she looked fat and that I was going to have to do something about it. It was an experience she says took her passion for singing and dancing. Feeling like you're never good enough is a soul-crushing state of being for a child. He drummed that message into me as a girl, and even after I'd accomplished so much, he was continuing to do that to me, she recalled. I became a robot, but not just a robot, a sort of child robot. I had been so infantilized that I was losing pieces of what made me feel like myself. Spears went on to say that the 13-year conservatorship, which officially ended in November 2021, stripped me of my womanhood, made me into a child, and ultimately saw her become more of an entity than a person while performing. According to the singer, if her father and the world had let her work out navigating celebrity, she would have come out of this the right way and worked it out. Thirteen years went by with me feeling like a shadow of myself. I think back now on my father and his associates having control over my body and my money for that long and it makes me feel sick, she said. Think of how many male artists gambled all their money away. How many had substance abuse or mental health issues? No one tried to take away their control over their bodies and money. I didn't deserve what my family did to me. She says that the conservatorship had robbed her of her freedom so much, she would fall into teen and childlike behavior. There was no way to behave like an adult since they wouldn't treat me like an adult, so I would regress and act like a little girl, but then my adult self would step back and only my world didn't allow me to be an adult. The experience, which she says she found laughable in the context of winning awards while supposedly so incapacitated that I had to be controlled, ultimately deprived her of a full life, including those. Sins of indulgence and adventure that make us human, resulting in the death of her creativity. Speaking to her earlier childhood before she attained massive global fame, Spears described a childhood where, as a member of the Mickey Mouse Club, she kissed Justin Timberlake as a Janet Jackson song played in the background and drank daiquiris in Biloxi, Mississippi, with her mother. I loved that I was able to drink with my mom every now and then. The way we drank was nothing like how my father did it, she recalled. When he drank, he grew more depressed and shut down. We became happier, more alive, and adventurous. She also detailed her fear as she slid around the MTV Music Awards stage with a giant snake draped around her neck as she sang, I'm a slave for you, unassumingly falling into method acting while filming Crossroads. Pretty much the beginning and end of my acting career, and a relief to the singer, who says she was happy she lost out on the lead part of The Notebook to Rachel McAdams.